Hi, welcome back. So what I decided to do, because this video ended up getting a little long, is that I'm going to split this up into two parts. So the first video will have three examples, and the next video will have four. So this all goes with the same worksheet if you want to work through it on your own, and then come back to the specific problems you want to see. Or you can just go ahead and watch this, and we can do the problems together. I'll talk a little bit about what we're going to do first, but if you want to just jump straight to the examples, go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is just go over really quickly the rules that I'm using today. My hope is that you've learned these rules before, so I'm not going to explain them or really go in depth. I'll just show them to you and then we'll start on the examples. So the rules that we have are basically that we can add or subtract terms and take their derivatives and just do that by taking their derivatives separately. So that's called the sum or difference rule often. We also can handle constants in front of terms. So if there's a constant in front of the term, it doesn't affect the derivative, it just stays with the derivative. We also have the derivative with power rule. So we have x to the n, we do n times x to the n minus one. We also then have product rule. This is for when we're multiplying things together. We have quotient rule for when we're dividing. So this is um, when we have a rational function. So something in the numerator and something in the denominator. Then we have chain rule, which helps us with compositions of functions. And then we also just have the derivatives of a few other functions. So we have the derivatives of our trigonometric functions. I'm going to focus just on sine, cosine, and tangent. We also have the derivative of exponentials. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And we have the derivative of a logarithm. So the derivative of ln of x specifically is 1 over x. So these are my basic building blocks that I'm going to use when I'm doing these derivatives. There are obviously other types of derivatives. There's more complicated rules, but these are the ones I like to focus on and that me and my students do together. So this is what I'm going to do in the video. As a general tip, what I try to do is read the problem to myself when I'm seeing a complicated derivative. So I want to try to read the problem to help me understand all of the components that are going on. And that will often indicate what rule I'm going to use. So if I need to say something times something else, that tells me I need to use a product rule. Or if I get totally lost in trying to read it out loud, I usually know that's a chain rule because it's hard to read those ones out loud when there's so much going on. So this is a tip that I would do often just in my mind, but I'll try to demonstrate it here in the video as well. All right, so our first derivative, we're taking the derivative with respect to x of e to the x times 6x minus 1. So I noticed right away that I said times, I said e to the x times 6x minus 1. So that tells me I'm going to be using a product rule. There will probably be other rules involved, but this is the one I know I'm using to start. Um, this is sort of my overall rule and my starting place. So I see that we have e to the x times 6x minus 1. So e to the x is my first function and 6x minus 1 is my second function. So I'm going to leave e to the x alone and then multiply it by the derivative of the other part. So times the derivative of 6x minus 1. Then I do the opposite. So I'm going to add this to the derivative of e to the x. And then I leave the 6x minus 1 alone. I recommend putting in as many parentheses as you need when you do this so you don't accidentally drop some of the algebra. All right, so this is my product rule. This is what I wrote at first, the product rule, the derivative of these two things multiplied together. And now I just need to solve the derivatives within this. So I have e to the x, and I'm multiplying this by the derivative of 6x minus 1. The derivative of 6x is 6, and the derivative of 1 is 0. So I'm actually just going to write times 6. Then I add this to the derivative of e to the x, which is just e to the x. And I'm going to multiply by that 6x minus 1. OK. So honestly, I don't really like to simplify my derivatives too much. I find that it often causes errors. So if it were me, I might just leave this. I'd be fine if my students did that. But this isn't too complicated to simplify more. And I think sometimes it's nice to be able to do that, especially if you're comparing to like using Symbolab or using some sort of derivative calculator. It's not going to write it like this. It's going to write it in a different form. And so I think it's sometimes nice to be able to get your answer to look more like that, just so you can check your work. So I'm just going to distribute. I'm getting 6e to the x, and then I'm adding that. I'll distribute. I have 6xe to the x and minus e to the x. So I can combine like terms. I see I have two terms that have e to the x's. 
I have 6e to the x minus 1e to the x, so that is 5e to the x. And then we still have my 6xe to the x. And there we go. I think I would write that as my final answer. All right, so that is my final answer for that derivative. We use product rule and then just a little bit of our other rules on the derivative of 6x minus 1. And I guess we took the derivative of an exponential too. Okay, let's do the next problem. So here we're taking the derivative of 10x to the fourth minus 5x plus 2 all over x. So to me, when I see that big fraction bar where we're doing one thing divided by another, that tells me that I'm going to use quotient rule. So to me, this is a quotient rule problem. And it might be that we have to do some other rules within there to take these other derivatives, but I'm gonna start with quotient rule because that's sort of my overarching thing. I have to do that at some point, so we're gonna start with that. So the way I remember my quotient rule is I do low d high minus high d low all over the low squared, and the low is the denominator the bottom of the fraction, and the high is the numerator or the top of the fraction. So let's go ahead and do that. I do low d high, so that's x times the derivative of 10x to the fourth minus 5x plus 2. And then I subtract high d low. So 10x to the fourth minus 5x plus 2 times the derivative of x. And if you're feeling really fluent, you can actually just do these derivatives right away. I am just writing it out for the sake of the video. I'd probably just like do the derivatives right away if it were me on my own. But we're building fluency here. We don't have to be totally fluent yet at this, so we're just going to write out the steps. Okay, we did low d high minus high d low, and then we square the denominator, so we do low squared. So that's all divided by x squared. So I have x, and now I'm going to take this next derivative. These are all power rules, or just derivatives that we know, of like a linear or a constant term. So I have 40x cubed minus 5, and then plus 0. I won't write that. So 40x cubed minus 5 is that derivative. Then I subtract the 10x to the fourth minus 5x plus 2. And the derivative of x is just 1. And this all gets divided by x squared. OK, so this isn't very pretty. It's technically finished, in my opinion. However, I would probably simplify it a little bit more just to combine some like terms. And when we're done, I'm actually going to show you a second way we could have solved this derivative. So I do want to simplify it just so we can compare our answers and make sure they're the same. So, okay, let's go ahead and simplify. I just want to distribute things and combine like terms, get rid of some of these parentheses. So I distribute that x. I have 40x to the fourth minus 5x. Then I'm going to subtract this entire term. So I need to make sure I'm subtracting each of the elements. So I'm doing minus 10x to the fourth minus a minus, so that's plus 5x, and then minus 2, and that's all divided by x squared. Okay, we're making progress. Now I just need to combine like terms. I am seeing we have a 40x to the fourth minus 10x to the fourth, so that's 30x to the fourth. And we have a minus 5x plus 5x, those cancel, and then a minus 2, and that's all over x squared. And honestly, I think that's probably good. I would leave it there. So with quotient rule, this took a lot of space, honestly, like it took a lot of time to write. Sometimes it's actually easier for us to try to simplify a problem first. I like to just show the quotient rule at the beginning because I think often our instinct, especially when we're first learning this, is to just like figure out which rule to use and go ahead. And I think that's great, honestly, like there's nothing wrong with that. Like figure out your rule and do it. However, sometimes if we like take a pause, we can actually make the problem simpler before we do that. Um, I think that takes a little bit of like maturity with these concepts or like just luck if you happen to notice that you can simplify it first. So I'm going to erase what we have and show you how to do this again with a different method and we'll see that we should get the same answer. Okay, so what I want to do here is simplify it first and that means we're going to take that x that's in the denominator and distribute it to each of the other parts in the numerator. I don't know if I really said that right, let me show you what I mean. So we're going to simplify first. And this will hopefully make our derivative easier. So I still need to take the derivative. I'm going to leave that ddx there. But now I'm going to distribute the x to each term. So I have 10x to the fourth over x minus 5x over x plus 2 over x. 
So I'm basically taking this big fraction and splitting it up into three fractions that are being added together. Now on the first two terms, we can cancel x. So the x in the denominator will cancel with one x in the numerator on each of these. So I have the derivative. Now I have 10x cubed, since one of those x's cancels. I have minus five. And then I'm gonna write this as two x to the negative one. So I'm just moving that x into the numerator and making the exponent negative because it's much easier for me to take the derivative that way. So now I have something that is basically just a polynomial. I mean, that last one has a negative exponent, so all right. But we're just going to be using power rule on each of these terms. That's where we're at now. So we're actually doing simplify and then power rule, which I think that power rule for students and for me is just easier than all the other rules. Like it becomes sort of instinctual. So at this point, this derivative hopefully won't be too bad. So the derivative of 10x cubed is 30x squared. The derivative of 5 is 0. And then the derivative of 2x to the negative 1 is going to be negative 2x to the negative 2. So this looks slightly different from what we got in our original. Um, it's just a little bit of maneuvering to get us there. So I'm going to write this as 30x squared minus 2 over x squared. And then if we wanted to get a common denominator here and combine this into one fraction like our other answer had, we would... Um, put an x squared on both the numerator and denominator of that 30x squared. So let me write that really quick. I don't know if that made a lot of sense. So we would do 30x squared times x squared over x squared. That's like times one, we're allowed to do that. And then subtracting two over x squared. And then we're allowed to put these fractions together since they have the same denominator. So now we have 30x to the fourth minus two all over x squared. And that should look like our other answer we got when we did this as quotient rule. And honestly, when you do it, this method with simplifying, I probably wouldn't rewrite it as the fraction. I might just leave it as the answer we got earlier on. So 30x squared minus 2 over x squared. And that would be a fine answer. So that's a good point when you're doing these problems. Sometimes the answer you get might look different than someone else's answer. And it doesn't mean either of you are wrong. So Math can look different sometimes depending on how it's written, but it still represents the same thing. So here we have two different ways to represent the correct answer. And this is good to keep in mind if you're ever checking your work with a derivative calculator, because the derivative calculator might say one thing that looks totally wrong to you and you shouldn't doubt yourself immediately. Like maybe just the way you wrote it is slightly different. And so don't just like immediately assume the computer is right and you're wrong. You might have just written things in a different way. Okay. Let's go ahead to the next examples and hopefully um, they're pretty straightforward and we can just keep working through. Actually, there's only one more example in this video and then the other problems from the worksheet, problems four through seven, are in the next video, which I'm calling like part two. All right, let's go. All right, next we have the derivative of ln of x to the sixth. So here, when I say ln of, and it's something that's more complicated, that indicates to me that we're going to need to use chain rule. So this is the natural log of x to the sixth. We have two functions. We have natural log and x to the sixth. And so this is a composition of functions that's going to require chain rule. So depending where you're at in your learning chain rule journey, this might be different levels of difficulty. So really quickly, let me just outline the inside and the outside functions. So we're using chain rule here. The inside function is x to the sixth and the outside function is ln of x. So I like to just kind of go ahead and take this derivative and not get too caught up in the inside and outside bits. But if doing those derivatives separately is helpful for you, please go ahead and do that. So when we do chain rule, I need to take the derivative of the outside and then leave the inside alone. So the derivative of the outside is the derivative of ln of x, which is just one over x. So for me, I write that as one over what was on the inside. So one over x to the sixth. Then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So I might just actually write that just to give us one intermediate step. So I'm doing the derivative of x to the sixth. So derivative of the outside, derivative of natural log with the inside left alone, substituted in as the input. Then I multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So for us, that is one over x to the sixth. And then the new derivative of that x to the sixth is six x to the fifth. I probably just would have written that right away, but just to give us a pausing moment with that other derivative. 
And now we're like technically done. We need to take the derivative, but I do want to simplify this a little bit because some things are going to cancel. So we would write 6x to the fifth over x to the sixth, and we can cancel out some of those x's, and so I have 6 over x as my final solution for the derivative. Okay, so there we go. That's our chain rule. Yeah, okay. All right, that's it for this video. I hope this was a good start for you with taking some derivatives using multiple rules. In the next video, we'll build up to combining product, quotient, and chain rule together. So doing like product and quotient rule, quotient rule and chain rule, that sort of thing. So. Thanks so much for watching. If you could like this video, if it was helpful for you or subscribe, that would be super helpful. I'm trying to grow this channel so it can reach more people learning math and more students to get them help with the math they're learning. Thanks so much and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.